Paris, and I work at the intersection of global education, digital literacy, and learning and development. And so I'm especially excited about the next keynote. Hannah Nordlund is the program director of DigiVisio 2030. She discusses today the digital transformation of higher education from the Finnish perspective. What can we learn from the program DigiVisio 2030 and a national digital service platform that Finnish higher education institutions have built together? Hello, Hannah. Hello. I hope you hear me well. We hear you well. Okay. The stage is yours. We're very happy to have you. Thank you so much. And I hope the connection is good enough. I'm actually having this presentation from Athens, where I'm participating another conference. Take so it let's away. See. I try to, I try to um, share my screen. Hopefully you see it now. Yes, we can. Okay. So good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm going to tell you about the uh, Finnish perspective on uh, decentralized digital solutions in the context of DigiVisio uh, 2030 uh, program. Uh, but first, a few words about higher education in Finland. And, and these slides have been borrowed from our Ministry of Education and Culture. So uh, we have 13 universities. Uh, 22 universities of applied sciences and uh, both of them have uh, approximately the same amount of, of students. We have three uh, key uh, goals for higher education and research at the moment nationally. Uh, the first one is that um, in uh, our continuous learning uh, strategy, uh, sets the goal that 50% of uh, youth uh, graduate from higher education in 2030. Uh, uh, and also that uh, employees already in working life, 60% of them participate in continuous learning. And our uh, quite new government program uh, that goes back a, a year now, uh, sets the goal that uh, the um, uh, R&D expenditure will be uh, lifted to 4% of GDP tw uh, by 2030. And of course, these objectives guide our work as well. And digitalization is uh, one uh, key um, means of uh, achieving these goals. Before DigiVisio, the, we had quite a, a decentralized model of developing higher education. Uh, these are uh, around 60 projects, uh, governmental key projects that we had before. And um, uh, during those uh, projects, uh, already the higher education institutions initiated a discussion about the need to have uh, more um, more impactful, less uh, overlapping and less scattered development, which would result in national digital uh, solutions that are scalable and, and um, that all higher education institutions use in order to, for example, uh, advance uh, interoperability. And that's uh, how uh, the DigiVisio 2030 program got started. It's a joint program of Finnish higher education institutions and the aim is to uh, create flexible learning uh, opportunities for the learners and on the other hand to um, improve and increase the collaboration between higher education institutions and enable them, them to succeed in a changing landscape of higher education in, in 2030. So this is about creating a future for learning and, and kind of designing the future of higher education together uh, for the Finnish higher education institutions. And briefly about the objectives uh, of this program. Uh, the first one is to create a national digital service platform that uh, enables and improves interoperability 
on all levels of intro interoperability in higher education. And the second goal is to build guidance services for the learners that are based on uh, using technology, uh, data about the learners, uh, uh, pedagogical excellence and, and the idea of learners' individual learning paths. And the third one, which we think actually is the most challenging part of this program, is to support the change management and achieving the change in, in higher education institutions. And, and that's why we have launched a change uh, management support um, project um, under this Digivisio 2030 program. And we have been focusing in the first phase of the program, we've been focusing on continuous learning and now we are uh, gradually um, moving to the degree side as well. And uh, what this uh, means from the viewpoint of learner, uh, it would mean that each learner has, a, has one identity and uh, the education uses uh, a shared authentication service and the learners can use the learning offerings of higher education institutions across their boundaries uh, offering uh, a fluent uh, individual smooth learning paths for the learners for continuous learners and then later on to the degree um, students as well we are also building a national uh, My Data uh, portal for the learners that uh, gives them access to their learning related data. Uh, and then they decide themselves how the data can be used, but it can be used for, for uh, building guidance services, also competence uh, identification or recognition, and uh, also, for example, job seeking later on. And naturally, this all is based on, uh, or it builds on shared data repositories and data models. And uh, also later on, we would like this uh, the data that we have to be uh, available and used by other parties than higher education institutions. And, and that way we could, or we want to build an ecosystem that, uh, that um, offers different kinds of learning uh, supporting services that can be built by higher education institutions together or, or just uh, groups, smaller groups, groups of higher education institutions, or just, for example, for, um, by private companies. And uh, we've had some challenges along the way, and, and I was told that the challenges and lessons learned are something that you are particularly interested in. So I'm going to uh, those next. Well, uh, we have a big consortium, 37 higher education institutions, and it's a strength, definitely, so that we can, we can really make the large scale uh, change happen that we are after here. But on the other hand, it's a challenge too. Uh, there are a lot of uh, different higher education institutions. They have different starting points. They are in quite different places in their digitalization uh, journeys and of course they have different uh, strategies and that means that there are a lot of uh, opinions and, and viewpoints to to consider in this program uh, all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, we are also, as I already mentioned, we have a, quite a new government program and the funding model for higher education institutions, uh, both the universities of applied sciences and for the universities is changing starting uh, in the beginning of next year. So a lot of changes and turbulence, quite a challenging economic situation in Finland right now as well. So it's really easy to get lost in the short term challenges and, and focusing on, on resolving those uh, when we really need to pay, pay attention to the long term vision and keep 
the big picture, long-term big picture in mind. So that is something that needs to be uh, worked on constantly. And, and it's uh, also a question of uh, prioritization. And it would be so much easier to do these platforms and digital services if we could just start uh, on a, from a clean table or, or do this in some kind of a vacuum. But since that is, is not the case, uh, it's, uh, it's been quite challenging to fit these centralized new solutions into the existing service ecosystem and in, into the existing uh, architecture. Um, and uh, some, of, some of these solutions that we are building are completely new solutions. Uh, some of them will replace some um, uh, uh, existing services. So in a way, there is a lot of uh, uh, common roadmap building with our key partners and, and a lot of discussing because when uh, new solutions uh, replace older ones, uh, there is always a question of uh, someone losing something and, and uh, the, a lot of diplomacy needed there as well. Um, I already mentioned that the higher education institutions are in uh, different phases in their own digitalization. And um, uh, it's, uh, it's been challenging. We've been putting a lot of effort in building commitment and sense of ownership. And also uh, is something that is really important is a sense of control for the higher education institutions and try to fit together different phases of digitalization. Uh, and um, yes, it's been a challenge, but I think we've been doing quite well. It, it has uh, taken some time, but we are in a, in a quite a good place with that right now. Mm. At least in Finland, the uh, higher education institutions are quite traditional, uh, very hierarchical also uh, in, in some ways. Uh, so it hasn't always been easy to match the agile development methods that we are using in the program office into this uh, more traditional world. And um, uh, there are many, many, many uh, higher education institution um, experts um, uh, in this program office, working here in the program office as well. And for many of them, this has been the first uh, agile development or agile software development project that uh, they have been involved in. So there's been a lot of uh, learning and teaching and learning in a way that how the agile development works and, and what it does and what it does not uh, provide. Uh, but there too, it's been a learning journey and, and um, after a couple of years that we've been doing the uh, software development, for example, now quite many uh, already know how this works and, and uh, the expectations have been managed quite well. And last, but definitely not the least, uh, the last one is probably one of the most uh, challenging uh, of our challenges, is that the, uh, this kind of a change and common platform uh, definitely changed the dynamics between the higher education institutions. Um, it brings a, a lot of transparency, uh, competition, competition, but also uh, collaboration at the t same time. And we, we are starting from a very, very learner-centric uh, viewpoint in this program. And, and that is something that is uh, quite challenging and also impacts the dynamics. So um, this is something that we've been uh, dealing with. And I think that um, from the next slide and my last slide and the lessons learned uh, there are some solutions to to this as well so um, what we have learned uh, the first one sounds maybe a little bit like a cliche but maybe it's a cliche for a reason if it is that uh, but uh, a shared vision is 
truly important and that was something that we we began the uh, the program with so we build a shared vision of the future so how do we see that the higher education uh, in Finland will be in 2030 and what's the European and, and global context for for higher education and since this is a program where we are building the future it is really important that uh, the higher education institutions feel that the, the vision that we are uh, trying to make happen is something that they feel comfortable with and and it is something that they can feel committed to so uh, building the vision and then as i already uh, said uh, a little bit earlier that it's so easy to get caught up in in the long-term challenges and and long long-term kind of things that need to be solved so so the, the vision needs to be revisited often uh, and that's what we are doing and we are also updating it from time to time uh, and discussing that if the, if the vision still seems something that we are committed to and, and if it's something that we feel that will work in 2030 because things are changing really fast right now. For us, the, the centralized funding has been of great importance and it's provided by the Ministry of Education and Culture. So um, that way uh, it, we have been able to build the governance model and for example, prioritization model. Uh, and everybody knows that uh, an individual higher education institution cannot um, kind of uh, order work from us, but things need to be uh, discussed together and then we do prioritization and sometimes it's another uh, group of higher education institution that are a little bit on the winning side and and the other ones maybe a bit uh, they have to give up and go compromise more but uh, the centralized funding makes that possible and then we just have to see that it's not the same ones that are always compromising and same ones that are winning so it's our job to balance that and then building trust that is something that we have learned that um, uh, we need to put a lot of resources and a lot of effort into this and and the hard part of building trust is that even though you had all the money in the world you just cannot speed up and hurry certain things but it just takes time uh, but for us this uh, building trust has been really important and and the main reason is that uh, as i said this takes you to the basic uh, things quite uh, quite fast and uh, there are a lot of hard things to solve and unless there is trust uh, the the parties involved uh, do not dare to kind of raise up the questions, the concerns or the disappointments that inevitably, inevitably um, happen in a program like this too. So in order to be able to discuss and get uh, over those disappointments or concerns, uh, trust is of uh, uh, the greatest importance. And then you probably uh, uh, know that too, that uh, autonomy is uh, quite important for higher education institutions, at least in Finland. And uh, this has been one of the maybe uh, biggest lessons learned. And I think that's something ha that we have managed to do quite well uh, is that we've been able to balance the autonomy and uh, on the other hand of building uh, common solutions and, and agreeing on things. It has not been easy and sometimes it's like walking on eggshells a little bit, but it is possible and, and we have we have seen that and that is something that I'm I'm really happy about. But it it takes the you have to have the balance between what is in the in the heart of the autonomy and, and what are the things that can be discussed and, and uh, done together. And uh, driving a large scale change takes you to really basic uh, questions 
uh, quite fast and also quite often. So uh, things like competitive uh, advantage of higher education institutions, competition um, uh, strategy, and um, if you have trust, uh, it, is, uh, it is possible to discuss those together, but unless you have trust, it is uh, quite uh, impossible. And if there are a lot of things that cannot be discussed, they are kind of uh, looming behind every corner. So, uh, and they make the development work a lot harder. So uh, that's why it's important to be able to trust and, and discuss those really, really like meat and pot potatoes kind of things. And then something that I feel that we have um, succeeded quite well or done quite well is that we have a good governance model and also model how um, the higher education institutions participate in this quite centralized work. And we have uh, uh, around 1,500 experts from higher education institutions participating in the development work each year. And, and that needs a, a quite a clear model and ways to do it. Uh, but uh, I think we've finally, we have revised it and, and uh, done it uh, again and again a couple of times. But now I think we have quite a good model and, and the higher education institutions, they know, know that they can participate uh, in, in the things that they feel are most important for them. But everybody obviously cannot participate in, in every activity. Can I, can I, can so these were the, the lessons learned that I, I wanted to share with you and, and uh, I'm going to uh, stop my presentation now. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you so much. I was about to interrupt you because we have very little time left, sadly. Yeah. Um, can I ask you just quickly one question from the chat? Um, which refers to our federal system, which is different from yours, um, and perhaps you have advice. In Germany, we have a federal system instead of a centralized structure. How did or do you deal with decentralized various digital solutions to bring them together? And you alluded to this, but perhaps you can go into yeah. a bit more detail and, and make it a bit more concrete for us to, to yes. understand your process a little bit. Yes. Uh, first, I have to say that in Finland, we have a quite a good base and tradition of uh, certain centralized solutions. So we've been, we haven't started from, from the zero and that has helped us. But I think it's always, you have to, interoperability is one important aspect that decentralized solutions are possible when you build on interoperability. And then just uh, you have to discuss and decide together uh, what are the solutions that can be given up and, and replaced by uh, centralized common solutions and, and what are the ones that will remain and need to be interoperable. I think those, there, there is no, uh, I think I don't have a silver bullet to that. It's just uh, hard work. <laughs> And where have you looked for your own inspiration? So if we look at, you know, the entire European landscape, um, where have you learned lessons from in your own approach? Where should we look? Uh, I think we have learned from, from many, uh, many different countries. We've actually made this uh, a little study about what's happening around Europe and, and where are similar uh, initiatives. Uh, surf uh, and the impulse in in the Netherlands is something that we have been collaborating with. Uh, but we they also visited us in Finland. There were also uh, actually visitors from Germany uh, uh, with them. Uh, uh, also, UK and JISC have done uh, things that have inspired us. Uh, but many countries. And, and I think it's also really important to look outside the higher education and education sector, because I think this, uh, for example, the solutions that learners expect from us, they are, they are um, comparing us to Netflix or um, services like that. They, have a, they are used to 
good user experience and, and um, fluent uh, user uh, journeys. So I think that we definitely also need to look outside education. Thank you for that input. Whoever is interested can contact you, I'm assuming. So this yes. conversation is not over, but we're just pausing it because we're under time constraints. Thank you so much for what you shared today. Um, we're taking a lot of food for thought. Um, and have a lovely day and enjoy the conference that you're currently at. Warm wishes from Berlin. Thank you. And thank you for having me. Thank you, Hannah.